In module two, we're going to be taking a look at the Bluemix user interface. So I'm going to bring up the browser and just walk you through the various features available in the interface. So when you go to the Bluemix user interface, the first thing you'll see is you need to log in. So you hit the login button and then enter your user ID, which will be your email address that you registered with, and also your password. And when you log in, the first thing you'll get taken to is your dashboard. Now, I've been using Bluemix for a while, so I've got a number of things already set up here. So your dashboard will look slightly different because it will be empty. I've got the menu popping up on this left hand side. If you've got a larger resolution, you'll see the menu coming up on the top of the screen. Within the dashboard, you've got a number of different areas. This shows you the current organization you're working at, you're working in. When you're in your 30-day free trial, you get to see how many days you've got left of your trial. And then these two icons allow you to see any quick start notifications. And then this is where all the settings related to your account are. Under that, we've got a status dashboard where you can see where the current state of your resources are. So this shows you how much memory you've used and how much memory you've got. And then similarly with services, how many services you have deployed and how many services um, you have available. Then under that section, you'll see what you've got deployed. Within this lower resolution, you may prefer to use the list view where you can then see things in a slightly different format. If I click into an application, I get taken to the application screen, and here I can see a summary of what this application is. So you can see that here I'm using the node runtime. I've got one instance of this application running. It's taking up half a gig of memory. And you can then see the services that it's using underneath. So I'm using a data cache service here and I'm also monitoring it with the monitoring service. I get a basic activity log here and then the ability just to see what's going on with the application. I can configure it using this drop down menu so I can stop, restart, rename and change the URL that it appears on the public internet and I can also delete and clear the application. If I come back to the dashboard, we're then going to look at what else is in the menu. If I go to solutions, here I see a number of areas with predefined solutions and sample applications. So if I go into, say, for example, the Internet of Things, it's going to show me some case studies and give me some samples, let me try out some applications related to that topic. Moving on to pricing. So when we start Bluemix, you get a 30 day free trial. So everything you do in that 30 days is going to be free. After that, you can insert and put a credit card and then you can use, continue using the services. And within the pricing, we have the ability to help you estimate the cost of an application. So you can use these quick sliders to sort of say how many instances am I using, how much memory do I want, and that's going to give me a rough cost of what this application will use each month. So here are some samples that you can see. And then we also have this calculator to allow you to work out exactly what's going on. The other way of doing this is if I come back into the dashboard and go back into that application, I can actually use the same calculations to say, what's this application going to cost? So here I can drop this down and it's going to show me that I'm using the runtime 
This is the price per hour. So I was using half a gig of memory. So I can have two instants running for one hour and it's going to cost me this amount. I'm in the UK, so I'm showing um, British pounds. Um, you can change the region here to show in a different currency. It will default to your home currency. I can then work out what happens if I increase the number of instances and increase the amount of memory I give. You can see the cost is automatically adjusted based on these settings. And then you also see what happens as I come down and use the services as well. So I can get a full understanding of what it's going to cost to run this application. If I don't want it in a monthly, I can click down and show an annual cost of running this application on Bluemix. All the basic services and the base functionality of Bluemix is covered in the documentation. So when you go into the documentation, you can find out all the various information. You can search here, so if I want to work out, for example, the node runtime, and it'll show me there and take me to the documentation that's available within these, the node area. And the drop down menu allows me to very quickly navigate the various areas of the documentation and find out information. The next thing we're going to look at is what happens when things don't quite work out. And there are two ways you can get support in Bluemix. We have an active community on Stack Overflow, so you can go and ask a question there. Or we also have an active community on Developer Works, which is IBM's developer support. Um, which is IBM's developer support site. So you can just click either of these buttons and ask a question if you need to get support. If you have an issue, you can come in and also ask for support here and you can raise a ticket to get support for Bluemix that way. If I go and look at my account, this is where I can see exactly what I've been doing on Bluemix. So you can see how much activity I've been doing in terms of the runtime and the services. You'll also notice that we also get the free runtime charges. So every month you get a certain amount of usage for free. And then you can see on top of that how much I would have spent if I hadn't been in the free trial mode. That's then broken down and I can see what run times have cost, what services have cost, and then I get a breakdown of all the services I'm currently using. So this way I can very quickly understand what's happening on my account. So if we use this drop down, I can get to a notification section, and here I can set notifications so I can manage how much I'm spending on Balloon Mix. So I can get notifications when I get to 80%, 90%, or 100% of a specified threshold that I want to know about. So I don't get any nasty surprises. And then the last section is the catalog. Within the catalog, there are a number of sections. The first section are boilerplates. These are very quick getting started. Um, applications. They're a bundle of a runtime, one or more services, and a sample application. It's a very quick way of getting started when I'm using a new project. Underneath that, there are the built in runtimes with Bluemix. 
So I can program in a number of different languages. And when I deploy from these runtimes, I will get a sample application, a Hello World type application, just to get me started. Because we're built on top of Cloud Foundry, there is a large community where there are a number of other build packs. So I can actually go out and bring in a build pack, a different language runtime from the community and use that on Bluemix as well. When I have my application running, I've then got the ability to bind services. So rather than having to install and configure um, other middleware, I can just consume them as a service. And we've got a number of categories. So here I'm looking at the IBM Watson. They are the cognitive analytic capabilities that Watson brings. And we have a number of Watson services exposed here in Bluemix. We then go on to a number of services that will help you create backend for a mobile application. We then look at the DevOps, and we're gonna be talking about that in a later module. So these help you develop and manage your applications through the entire life cycle. With web applications, we've got a number of services that can help you create your web application. Things like caching, session caching, workflow, business rules, message queuing. We've then got some services to help you integrate with your existing data center. An application is no use unless it can get to and integrate with other applications that you'll be running within an enterprise or a public service. So these applications will help you create those links to other applications. And then we've got data management. So these are SQL, NoSQL type data stores. Big data is one of the up and coming areas of computing. So we've got a number of services to help you manage big data, to analyze, to get insight into the, that data. And then we've got a number of, of services to help you manage the security. They'll do static scans of your web or your mobile applications. We've got business analytics with embeddable reporting and predictive modeling. And then lastly, at the bottom here, we've got Internet of Things to connect to various devices and infrastructure and allow that data to flow into your applications. When you look at the catalog, you'll notice that we have different color outlines. The blue are services provided by IBM. The green are services provided by third parties. And then if we've got the gray, these are community. So these come from the open source community and we pulled these into Bluemix as well. So these are the catalog of services and applications we can run. And then the last thing I'm gonna show you is within your organization. So I come back into the dashboard you see here I'm running within the, my home organization. You'll see that I'm running within the United Kingdom region and I'm actually in a space called Workshop. So it's very easy to create a new space. I just give it a name and hit create. And then I've got my new space here. I can also go in and manage spaces. And this then allows me to do things like, within a space, add users. So I can now allow other users to come in and share that space. I can then give permissions. And I can delete the space. If I have a domain that I want to bring in, I can also do that from here. So here you can see I've created a custom domain for me, and then I can now have my applications running on Bluemix belonging to that domain. I do have to manage the DNS routing with my um, domain service provider, but it does allow me to bring in those domains. You can see here, I'm also being added to other organizations. So from this screen, I can look and 
see those other domains as well. If I've got a custom domain, I can import an SSL certificate so I get full SSL authentication. And again here, this is where I invite a user. Just clicking on the organization, I then get the ability to invite a user. So that is a very brief walkthrough of the user interface. Important things when you're working in the user interface is just be sure you're working in the region you think you're working in. One of the most common errors we get in the workshop is people will be logged into the user interface in one region and then maybe on the command line into a second region. So just be aware what region you're in and also once you're in the region, which space within that region you're currently working in.